Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your What is the five fingers? Say to the face! <laughs> oh slap! Photo news fix. <laughs> this fix is brought to you by Trojan and their full lineup of condoms, toys, and lubes. And lube. <laughs> Trojan wants to remind you to feel your best, get yours on. To find the perfect fit for you, head on over to Trojanbrands.com and take the Meet Your Match quiz today. And remember to always shoot raw into a Trojan. First up, let's kick off this action pack fix with an exclusive announcement from Nikon. And yes, Nikon gave us the exclusive just like they did when they were first announcing the 402.8 TC and 806.3, which I got my hands on before anybody else. Now I know some of you think that Nikon hates me, but their actions, including what I'm about to share with you, say otherwise. Are you ready? I'm ready for this my whole life. Introducing the Nikon Z. Eight. Finally, after years of suffering with the Z6 and Z7, Nikon is here with the Z8 and is forging a new future. Future is bright. A future that's supposedly built around competent autofocus that is priced at a price point that is worthy of you. Phone call. Oh, who could that be? Hello? Oh, it's Madeline K with Nikon PR. Don't, don't say suffering, the, Z, the Z6 and Z7 were amazing. I just didn't know how to set up the autofocus. Okay, Madeline, you work for Nikon. Now, Nikon didn't give us all the details just yet, but what we have, I think, is enough. Never enough. The Z8 basically looks like a Z9 without the built-in grip. It looks sturdy, rugged, and is laid out extremely well. It sports a 61.2 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor that's capable of shooting up to 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with the electronic one. And yes, the Z8 still does have a mechanical shutter unlike the Z9. It also does not have a stacked CMOS sensor. What it does have though is the same Xpeed 7 imaging processor of the Z9 along with 493 face detect AF points, meaning the AF shouldn't suck nearly as bad as the Z6 and Z7 did. Oh, you're right. Finally, we might have competent autofocus at a reasonable price point. Oh, stop yelling at your screen. You know I'm right and I've been right all along. You, you're always right. The Z8 also borrows the same four axis, 3.2 inch tilting touchscreen, includes one CFX rest type B and one SD card slot, and does have an optional pen one ass. .5 vertical grip. Now Nikon didn't share with me the video specs just yet, but they did share with me the price of the body and it's $34.99. Now I personally would have expected it to be around $4,000, but I guess Nikon wants to be super aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, they will be launching a D to Z trade up program by the end of the year to coincide with the launch of the Z8. What will it take you to trade in your D for some Z? Let me know down below. Next up, not to be outshined by Nikon. Canon has announced the development of their flagship R1. Now, being this is a development announcement, they were pretty tight-lipped on the details, but did let more specs fly than normal. The R1 shares a very similar design to the R3, but with some major updates under the hood. Let's start with what we know about the image sensor. The R1 will sport a 50 megapixel stacked BSI CMOS sensor capable of shooting 30 frames per second uncompressed RAW and 80 frames per second compressed RAW. All of this is thanks to the super fast readout speed of this new BSI sensor sensor, as well as the lightning quick write speed of the dual CF Express Type B cards. Speaking of shutters, it looks like Canon has followed in Nikon's footsteps by removing the mechanical shutter altogether. The R1 will include an all new Digic 10 Plus processor, new quad pixel multi-integrated live focus, which they claim to be the fastest autofocus in a mirrorless camera ever, second generation eye control, and an upgraded 5.76 million dot EVF. Now they didn't say much about the video specs, but but did say that it will shoot 8K at 60p and offer 4K at 240 frames per second. Basically what this sounds like is they took the Sony A1, Nikon Z9, and a bunch of HGH and came up with the R1. Starting defense. There was no word on price just yet, but with the R3 coming in at $6,000, my guess is that the R1 will be somewhere around $7,500, if not $8,000. 
dollars. Oh, I can't afford that. Oh, and, and when it gets announced in 2023, they will release a statement that says, due to unexpected demand, all five units that they made are sold out. I, I kid or do I? And finally, in what I will call unexpected news, Sony has purchased Panasonic's camera division and plans on shutting down production of all Micro Four Thirds products. That means the GA6 will be the last of its kind. Now there is some good news for Panasonic shooters. You will finally get access to actually quality good autofocus. Pew, 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 pew. Sick burn. It's true. Now, why would Sony choose to buy out Panasonic's camera division? Were they afraid of competition? Well, according to this statement translated from Sony Japan's website, it goes a little deeper, much deeper. I'm going deep, deep, deep. We highly respect Panasonic and everything they've done. They are great company with great history. We are great company with great history. Together, we can create more great history for the future. Cool. That told us absolutely nothing. Phone call. Wonder who that could be. Hello? Who Who's this? Molly with Pentex PR. You're you're upset. Why, why are you upset? Oh, because you offered to pay Sony to buy you out, and they said no. Well, I don't blame them. But in the biggest shocker of them all, Sony has announced they will be joining <clears throat> the El Mount Alliance and will be offering mount conversions from E-mount to L-mount in the next few months. There will also be an L to E-mount adapter released first. I guess their tiny mount finally became too tiny. Are you saying there's something wrong with my gear? And there you have it. That's your April Fool's Fix for 2022. Thank you very much for watching. To check out last year's April Fool's Fix, just click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Polinfrono's photo dot com. See ya.